So these electrodes right here we use in the Bio 350 and the Bio 446 neurophysiology class. You buy these from a company and it's just plastic with a little rubber stoppers here and a silver wire on the inside. This cost $84 each. So right now we're short of these and we're going to go ahead and make um, some simple electrode holders. These are for intracellular electrodes. So all you have to do, all the tools you need, are some very simple stuff that you might have in the lab already. One, a pasture pipette. And what we do with this is we mark it in certain spots, like right here, and about here, and about here. And why do we mark that? because these are the spots that we're either going to bend it or break it in two. And the way we break them is to etch them with a file. And so all, all one has to do is to go back and forth and then rotate the glass around and keep doing it like that. And then the most, the hard part is the very fine tip on this side. So all you do is just etch it a little bit and then uh, about more than half the time after you get the hang of it it'll break right the way you want it so here's one that's broken uh, been cut here you see it's here and it's been cut here and now what we do with this is we would take this and because that could be sharp edges on there we hold it with this and you put it over a Bunsen burner and you fire polish uh, the glass um, this is already bent Remember, originally it was just straight, so what you can do to bend it is just put that over the fire and it will slowly bend down like that. You want it about 45 or 30 degree angle um, for these electrodes, and I'll show you why. Okay, so that's there. So now what we have to do is to get our silver wire that we'll use for our intracellular electrode. So we get some silver. And you have to watch out what type of silver wire you get, the size of it, because it has to go inside of a microelectrode. Some silver wires come with a coating on it. You don't want one with a coating. What you can do is to cut it at various lengths, and you'll see at the length that you'll need after you make your electrode. So you cut it, and then you bleach it in a beaker with concentrated bleach let it sit for about 20 minutes and now that will chloride your silver wire. Let me just show you the difference between a chlorided and a silver wire that has not been chlorided. See how shiny that one is and how gray the top one is. This one sat for 20 minutes in, chlor in bleach. Okay, now after you've chlorided your wire you go ahead and wash it off and now we can solder it onto our little holder. So you take a little holder like this. It's a two millimeter pin um, that you can order from various places. They come at different types. Here's one over here as well. The ones that we are using over here that are on our electrodes that we've already made are from World Precision Instruments and it only costs $23 for a pack of 10. So divide this by 10, $2.30. If you add up the glass and a little bit of silver wire, that might be another 50 cents. So for $2.50, you will have an electrode instead of an $84 electrode. All right. So now that you have that silver wire, you go ahead and, and it's chlorided, you can go ahead and put that into your, your pin holder. It's a two millimeter pin and go ahead and solder that in with your soldering. All right, and uh, hopefully you know how to solder with the soldering and get that in there. If not, um, there's lots of YouTube videos that you can watch. Okay, after that's soldered in, or maybe one of these, there's all different types of little pins. I like these because they have a, a connector on the side. Sometimes you have to take these connectors off when you solder, otherwise that will be melted. So let's look at the ones from WPI. After it's soldered, I feed the glass over the silver wire like that and put it down on the, on the pin. It would look something like that, like right here. 
the little black thing can slip up on there and some of these have a screw so you can thin it on or you can even use heat shrink tubing that will shrink when it's hot and that will help hold it together why that's useful is it gives it some support so the glass won't break right there now let's look at one of these electrodes so you can see this electrode here and a little bit of a bend and why is that open like that well I think it's going to be easier for the students to load their intracellular electrode onto this you can look at different versions but this one might be relatively easy so what we're going to do is to take our intracellular electrode and remember when you fill these I saw somebody the other day in the bio 350 lab filling it with the um, Let's see if I can get this down. Oh my god. Sorry. Anyways. Yes. You don't want to fill it like this because what's going to happen? After the solution comes out, it's going to drip down over the tip. You want to hold it up and then fill it like this. And then when the solution drips out the back, that's okay because what can you do? You can take your finger and wipe it off and there's no KCL on the tip of your electrode that's going to go into your bath. Remember, this is 3 molar KCL. If that 3 molar KCL gets inside your bath with your preparation, it will kill your preparation. Also, just something to learn is that these little filament uh, electrodes, these are $10 each. So you want to be a little careful not to bend it too much and break them because each one is $10. Okay, so after you have your filled electrode, you can put this right onto your silver wire. And what's nice about these electrodes, the way they're made, is you can just kind of twist that around. And now you see that the way this glass is actually bent again is that that electrode wedges right in there. So now when you push it in onto your preparation, it won't be able to push back anymore because you've got it in as tight as it will go so now it'll just poke into the muscle fiber or the neuron what's nice about these compared to the other ones is that when you put it onto your intracellular head stage you can have it turned sideways and now pretend your preparation is in this dish for example and your electrodes here you can put that in and then rotate this around and now you're ready to poke your muscle fiber by moving your manipulator. This is also nicer, I think, than, than these because this little bend helps you to go straight down on your muscle fiber instead of an angle. So you'd have to tip this one a lot more to get down on there. They do make these at 45 degrees, but they actually cost you even more money. So this kind of cheap electrode for probably $2.50 will do the job and uh, help you poke cells or muscle fibers. I've used these for a number of years and we've published very good papers with this um, as well. Now if you didn't use heat shrink tubing on here or this plastic's a little bit loose, what I tended to do here with this whole arrangement that you see right here is I put them on here like this and without that glass there so you don't stab yourself and I used quick drying epoxy so you mix these two together equal amounts mix it in a little weigh boat dish like that with a stick and stir it up and you can see this is already hard stir this up but what's nice is you can put the glue onto the edges and it helps give more support to that glass and that little um, holder right there. So now you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten electrodes for two dollars, twenty-three dollars or so, and it's still a lot cheaper than one of these. Thank you.